Okay, thank you all for coming. Um, I'm Clarice. I'm Elsie. And I'm Minnie. <laughs> and what are you going to get out of this session? Well, we're going to explain to you how we, the Candle Wasters, have managed to gain a supportive, creative, um, international and predominantly female fan base through creating web series on YouTube. Uh, um, so the fourth member of our team, the Candle Wasters, Sally, couldn't be here today. So we'll just we'll think about her <laughs> and we'll just we'll keep we'll keep powering through. Um, so our two web series are Nothing Much to Do and Lovely Little Losers. And through those web series, we've amassed over 1.8 million views on YouTube uh, and we have 10,000 subscribers. Um, and you can find us on Tumblr at thecandlewasters.tumblr.com, on Twitter, candle, at candlewasters, uh, Facebook, if you just candlewasters, there's also a page for each of our web series, web series um, and on YouTube, if you just search it, it'll be there. <laughs> yeah. So before we go any further into explaining our projects, we're just going to give you a little bit of a background on what us, what, yeah, the basis of our series. So um, our videos are based on vlogs. So what's that? A vlog is a video blog. So there are like a huge um, variety of video blogs that people create online. Um, some are like diaries, some are informative. Um, we've got like there's beauty experts, there's people who do reviews, there are people who make educational videos. Um, some vloggers discuss the creative projects that they're making, others provide a space to discuss topics that concern them and their peers, like social anxiety or sex education. Um, and there's also daily vloggers who take the cameras around wherever they go and they film their lives, like self-mediated reality TV. And the vlogs vary in length, but most, mostly they're around three minutes long. And yeah. So people who make these videos, some of them have thousands or millions of people who watch these. Um, yeah, and it's a big genre of content for our generation, and it's essentially a new type of television that's amateur created. Oh yeah, here's an example of a vlog. Good morning, John. Uh, the internet? is pretty great. It's weird and economically and culturally diverse and it's my hobby and it's my job and it's my passion and it's my friend. A lot of the marvelous weirdness and diversity of the internet was and is because of a concept called net neutrality. Basically the idea that all the information flowing through the pipes of the internet has to be treated the same way, which is kind of a new thing. Other information distribution systems never really had that. <laughs> um, so YouTuber Hank Green half of the Vlog Brothers, an American YouTube channel with over 2.5 million subscribers, came up with the idea of adapting a classic novel to the modern day. The result of this is The Lizzie Bennet Diaries, a modern adaptation of Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice, um, where Elizabeth Bennet, aka Lizzie, vlogs about her life and experiences. The series ran from April 2012 to March 2013, it was the first literary-inspired web series and won the Emmy for Original Interactive Program in 2013. Since the show finished, mostly young amateur creators have made series such as The Autobiography of Jane Eyre, Camilla, Green Gables Fa Fables, and The March Family Letters, having been inspired by the Lizzie Bennet Diaries. It is appealing to creators to be able to reinterpret a well-known story which is often out of copyright. It's appealing to an audience of mostly young women aged 18 to 24 to be able to watch their favorite classical stories reimagined and see stories with female leads and romantic arcs. Cool, so now about us. Um, so we met at high school, we were a group of friends there and that was at Western Springs College in Auckland. And we range, our age range is 18 to 22. And so last year, no, not last year, a couple of years ago, once Lizzie Bennet Diaries had finished, um, it was wrapping up and we were thinking that that was awesome because it was, it was made so well, but also because of the low budget format. And we were thinking a lot of people are going to be making more series like this, especially like inspired by classic novels and plays and things. So we thought like hypothetically, what would we do if we were to make a web series? And we thought about Shakespeare 
And we're all big Shakespeare nerds. <laughs> and one of our favourite Shakespeare plays is Much Ado About Nothing. And we were thinking it would be really great if you had Benedict and Beatrice saying their soliloquies directly to the camera, just like people do nowadays with vlogs. And um, so we talked about this for a while, and then we realised, OK, well, why don't we just do that then? <laughs> and so we did, and that turned into nothing much to do. Uh, and yeah, a big part of the success of Nothing Much To Do is because we sort of just happened to tap into a niche audience. In the 21st century, there's the, you know, the fragmented audiences. You've got people watching TV, people watching TV sort of things on YouTube, people watching Netflix. Everything's so spread out in a way that it never used to be. Uh, and so the niches that we've sort of fell into are the people looking for literary web series and also the Shakespeare fans. Our audience is 94% female. So 53% of that is people 18 to 24. So it, quite interestingly, that's exactly what we are. So it just totally fit with, we were making something exactly what we wanted to see for people exactly like us. Yeah. yeah. Um. <laughs> In the two series we've made, we've pretended our characters are real. They exist in the real world. This means our characters needed reasons to film, edit, and upload their videos, because whatever content they posted could have effects on their lives outside of their YouTube channel. With vlog series, you need to justify anything that goes online, so our characters overshare their lives. We took a lot of YouTube conventions to help us show aspects of the story in a realistic manner. For example, when we wanted to show the relationship between Hero and Claudio, we used the My Boyfriend Does My Makeup, a vlogging convention used by beauty experts on YouTube. Um, Beatrice uses her vlog as a space to go on rants about her life and issues that she's passionate about. So, low budget filmmaking. Uh, we made nothing much to do on a budget of zero dollars. We had nothing. Um, so, for our auditions, we sort of, you know, made a Facebook group, invited people to that, told people from our school, told our friends. Uh, we're also, like, people who have been all involved in, like, theatre and drama groups, so we had friends through that. Uh, in terms of equipment, we owned some stuff, and we had some friends who owned, like, a good camera, so we borrowed that. Uh, and we filmed in our summer holidays over three weeks. We sort of did nothing else in those three weeks, which was... We just managed to find that time. Um, and yeah, our cast and crew were just pretty amazing that they gave us that time. And so we're really grateful to them for that. Yeah. Yes. yeah, and promotion. We didn't spend any money on promoting our series. Um, like we mentioned before, we've got a Facebook page and a Tumblr page and Twitter. And we recently got Snapchat. <laughs> Um, yeah, and we update people regularly on these platforms. And if you're subscribed to any of our YouTube channels, then you get a notification when we upload a video. And we made sure that for our first series, um, we had regular um, days that we updated. So that was a Wednesday, and then occasionally there'd be like extra videos in that week, so people knew when they, when we, they were going to get content. Um, also, Tumblr was a really important platform for us because that's where people who are interested in literary vlog series reside. It's also a platform that we understand ourselves because we use Tumblr a lot. And it's really neat that, um, yeah, that we go on there to see kind of communities who um, enjoy different TV shows and things. And so that's also, we now have a community there who enjoy our web series. And that's where we can see they them create um, different stuff inspired by a series, but we'll talk about that more later. Yeah, so our little subscribers. Um, we released Nothing Much To Do from March last year until November. Uh, at, that, at the end of the releasing schedule in November, we had 6,000 subscribers, and from the end of that until now, we've gained that extra 4,000 subscribers, so it's, it's just like, it keeps spreading. Um, if you are to watch our series, The Whole of Nothing Much To Do, it will take you longer than four hours. So that's like more than just your average movie. Um, most videos are between three to five minutes long with a maximum of seven minutes. Um, and our subscribers are from all around the world. What's really interesting is that 52% of them are American, 
which is something we just never would have guessed. And then after that, it's like, you know, the United Kingdom, then Australia, then Canada, then New Zealand, Germany, France, and just, I mean, if you keep going through our analytics, it's like all these countries around the world where people watch our show. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so transmedia was something that was really important to us with the series. Um, so not only did our characters have YouTube channels, but they also used other types of media to express themselves. Beatrice had a Twitter where she wrote random thoughts and updated her viewers on her when she put up a new video. Hero had an Instagram where she put up photos from her life, such as Outfit of the Day, which is her Instagram fad. And um, our characters also commented on each other's videos, um, which our audience um, really enjoyed. And yeah, it, this kind of content, this extra content, it didn't necessarily further the story, but it created the world for the characters. Yeah, another cool thing about that was like audience interaction. So you've got a random YouTuber, Elfriend2009, talking to Benedict, our character. Yeah. 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 Um, Sorry. <laughs> as mentioned earlier, when making a vlog series, we constantly ask questions like, why would a character film this? And why would they upload this to YouTube? In this way, we ensured we maintained the realism of our characters existing in the real world. In effect, time has also been incredibly important. Um, we uploaded some videos at like 3 a.m. because it's what the characters would do. <laughs> um, it was necessary for us to create our next series this year while nothing much to do was still relevant and fresh in people's minds um, it was realistic for the characters to move to uni this year our fans appreciate this level of realism and it's part of what makes our series stand out amongst others in the same genre I do. Okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we literally only thought that our parents and our friends would watch the show, nothing much to do, and so now 10,000 people watch it. Um, and so they're the kind of people that love to make GIFs on YouTube, which if you don't know, it's kind of like a little bit of a Harry Potter vibe of like a little picture that moves on the internet. It's amazing. Um, and so that will be like stills from our show that move. Uh, and so they've also created fan art. They've made socks inspired by our characters. They've made tea. And there are over 500 works of fan fiction about our show on the internet, which you can read at your leisure. <laughs> um, uh, we have songs in our series, which our characters sing, which we've written ourselves. Um, so there are a lot of people out there who like to cover our songs and put that online. And they've also written songs inspired by our story, which is just amazing. Um, there have been meetups in London, in Australia, in New York, and in New Zealand. Yeah, so after the success of Nothing Much To Do, we decided to make another web series. And this was a sequel series. It has some of the same characters from NMTD, from Nothing Much To Do, and then some new ones. And it's centered around a university, of, um, students in a flat in Wellington. And we decided to take um, our inspiration from another Shakespeare play, which is Love's Labour's Lost. And it's called, our, our series is called Lovely Little Losers. And um, yeah, and it translates quite well, <laughs> which is quite fun. Um, and we also wanted to push ourselves with this series and try and, yeah, branch out a little bit in our different ways. And we started releasing these videos in July and we've currently got 43 episodes and we're still releasing them. And the, ca the channel currently has 7,000 subscribers. Yeah. Another like, cool thing about doing nothing much to do in Lovely Little Losers is that NMTD was based on Much Ado About Nothing and LLL was based on Love's Labour's Lost. And those two plays are often paired together, but the other way around. Um, earlier this year, I believe it was Shakespeare's Globe, like they, the, or the Royal Shakespeare Company, they released videos of the two plays and they had the same actors and translated them through into both casts. So like what we've done. <laughs> um, we utilized the fan interest in NMTD by setting up a Kickstarter <laughs> for the sequel series. 
In the lead up to the announcement for Lovely Little Losers, we and our call for fan funding through the Kickstarter, we released a series of clues via our social media, which hyped people up for the upcoming announcement. We put our Kickstarter out during the last two weeks of NMTD. So we had some crossover between nothing much to do with finishing and people being excited for LLL. We ended up gaining over $1,000 in the first hour of our Kickstarter being live. And within two hours, we had successfully been funded. <laughs> <laughs> By the end of the 31 days, we had gained over $22,000. The difference between our original funding goal and how much we actually raised was mind-blowing. <laughs> <laughs> so our second web series. Uh, this time around, we had more money, obviously, but less time. Uh, to write the series. The first series we'd sort of spent a year just like chilled out writing it, everything's fine, we could just not make this, everything's all good. This time we were like, well, we've been given money, <laughs> everyone knows it's happening, we've got to actually do this. Uh, we also filmed more content, which is, you can't really tell that now because we haven't finished um, releasing the series, but I definitely think it's going to be longer than four hours this time around. Um, <laughs> yeah, and so uh, so we had the same cast and then some extra people and those extra actors were through acquaintances so we didn't do a big round of auditions again. Um, and the Kickstarter was mostly used for transport. We had a lot of actors that we were transporting from Auckland to Wellington and for food for the cast and crew. Uh, again, we filmed on three weeks in the summer holidays and this time around we bought a lot of equipment which was really exciting, stuff that we're still using now and will continue to use in the future. Uh, and again, our amazing cast and crew just did that for the fun of it, and we're really grateful to them. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, yeah, so what are we going to do next? <laughs> um, this year we applied for funding from New Zealand On Air um, for their digital web series fund. And there were 109 groups that entered into that, and that was a mix of professionals and amateurs and overall really tough competition. <laughs> and um, at the beginning of this month, we found out that we got funded um, $100,000. <laughs> yeah, and that's going to be really great because um, we, yeah, we're going to need the, like more money to make it the project that we want to make, but that's like an incredibly... Yeah, it's incredibly encouraging for us. So yeah, it's 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 insane. <laughs> um, yeah, so our working title is Bright Summer Night, and this is based on a Midsummer Night's Dream. And yeah, we want to push ourselves further. We want to move away from the vlog style. We want to make it more like your kind of normal drama <laughs> style, which means we can move the camera more, which we are very excited <laughs> about. <laughs> and not having to justify why the camera is capturing their lives at all times, so that's very exciting. Um, and then after that, we just want to keep creating stuff, so we might make short films and TV series maybe, maybe movies, <laughs> more web series. We're just really, really excited that we can, yeah, that we've been given these opportunities to just keep making stuff, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we put a lot of time into our two series and we wouldn't have been able to create what we did or even close to what we did if we hadn't put that much time into it um, or the amount of thought we put into it and it's like also our collaboration as a team without that we wouldn't be anywhere even though we're such a democracy it can slow us down <laughs> um, yeah it's ultimately so important that we're constantly supporting each other as even when we're not thinking about our characters lives we're answering emails and managing our social media to keep up with the fans um, we think our experience proves that if you persist, you can do a lot. We're still learning and we're so keen to learn more from, well, people like you guys as well. <laughs> so if you have any information you want to share with us, come talk to us or ask questions at the question -y bit, which will be soon. <laughs> um, we have so many ideas we'd like to make reality and to keep working in a creative space where if you put in the work and the time and you love and care about what you're doing, you can truly achieve so much. So thank you guys for coming along to hear us speak. Um, do you guys have any questions? <laughs> um, 
Thanks. Uh, I was curious as to how you script transmedia. Uh, transmedia. How do you develop the script and, and kind of sequence all of the different channels? Um, I can talk about Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, I was yeah. talk about script writing first. That we wrote all the scripts. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, you can do okay. that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Democracy Live. Yeah. So we um, wrote scripts for every single video. And then, so the actors all learnt those scripts. And then some of the videos, we got them to like improv little, little moments where we thought that that would kind of bring out um, different things. But most of it was scripted. And then with transmedia, it's a little bit more. Um, uh, spontaneous, but yeah, Clara's going to explain it. Oh, well, um, I was in charge for NMTD for the Instagram, Heroes Instagram account, so I'm reasonably familiar with that. But sort of the way I did it was uh, just like going off and planning stuff on my own, and then I'd be like, hey guys, these are my ideas, this is the picture I want to upload, this is the caption I want to do, what do you think? And you'd tell me that you liked it most of the time. Um, but yeah, I mean, a big part of the transmedia like a sort of solid moment that we all like remember is the, the in the videos coming up to like the kind of climax of the story uh, they're like it's Hero's birthday soon oh my god she's turning 16 and then um, like on the day when they said her birthday was going to be which I think was a Saturday the 16th of August uh, we put out some pictures on her Instagram that were like people are arriving at my party so it was like her and her boyfriend, her and her brother, her and her cousin. And then it was like, everything's going great. And then we also did tweets from Beatrice being like, people have arrived at the party. And then the tweets stopped, the Instagram pictures stopped, and there was nothing for a week. And our fans were like, what the flippin' heck is going on? And we were like, <laughs> take it. Um, even our actors and ourselves, we stopped using social media for that week, uh, which really freaked people out. But people knew that something was coming up and most of them had also read Much Ado About Nothing so they knew that Hero's birthday was our version of the wedding scene in Much Ado About Nothing she where, gets left at the altar. where she gets left at the altar and <laughs> dies. Um, <laughs> yeah. Which we didn't, we didn't yeah. kill her. Oh. But <laughs> yeah, a, lo a lot of our transmedia, like the YouTube comments, was done sort of in the spur of the moment but as I understand yeah. it there's like other people who make vlog series who have actually planned out their transmedia from the get-go, which is incredible, and I don't know how they have time for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially like with um, Lovely Little Losers, we upload three videos a week, and like the t having the time for like intense social media at the same time as that would be crazy. It'd be great. <laughs> yeah, especially like doing uni as well and stuff, like we just don't have the time. <laughs> yeah. What do you imagine will happen when you move to a more traditional format? Are you going to lose fans? Are you going to get pushback from them? What's going to happen, do you think? <laughs> um, well, it's really neat that our fans are so supportive of us. Um, they, I, I think it's quite cool that they feel, because we're their age, they feel like um, we're all kind of a big community. So I think they'll just be excited that we're trying new things and that we're branching out. Um, and I think, I think it's definitely... It'll be, we have to think about ways that, like our fans really, really enjoy the realism of our series at the moment. So we have to find ways that we can, yeah, still engage them, but not have that, um, not have them talking directly to the camera. So yeah, it's, it's going to be challenging, but I think it's also incredibly exciting. And um, I think overall it will be, they'll just appreciate the, the, the fact that it is new and different. Yeah. <laughs> and that we're adapting another Shakespeare play means that we're sort of sticking close to what we've done before with a literary inspired web series, but this time it will be more like a traditional web series where yeah. everyone doesn't see the camera. And in terms of like being traditional, like lots of our fans, the, the way Tumblr works is amazing because I'm just on there and I can like follow someone who watches my stuff and they can follow me and I can see what, what other things they like. And a lot of them like traditional television shows and movies and stuff. So it doesn't surprise me that they would still like what we would keep making, mm. even if it's gonna become like a little bit more like traditional. <laughs> Have you thought about um, capturing that whole um, series for, for later? Because people watched it in real time. They were seeing you tweet Instagram in real time. Mm. Have you thought about, you know, creating that whole collection of media, capturing it for future? 
Um, <laughs> one of our fans has actually gone through and taken all of the transmedia elements of our series and put them onto like a PowerPoint presentation with the videos and the comments and it's also incredible. <laughs> We're really grateful for them for doing it um, because yeah, we don't have the time for it. Um, but like, because it's on the internet, it's hopefully there and available for people to be able to watch forever if they want to. And we'd also really like to make it more obviously available to like schools and universities who are teaching Shakespeare to try and get their kids more engaged with the content that they're learning in a way that is perhaps more relatable for them as young people. Yeah. Yeah. But I think, yeah, it's, it's very true that it, what is also exciting about the series is that it is uploading over such a long period of time so people can come in and, and start seeing it being uploaded live. Um, and that experience, I think you do lose a little bit of that if you're watching it post us uploading. I think it definitely um, affects it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what a fantastic inspirational story. Let's thank you. We'll be in Oceania after this if you want to come talk to us about anything. <laughs>